So, as promised, I'm swooping into your sub boxes with yet another armor flying tutorial. Totally not recycling content, by the way. <laughs> but seriously, this one will be different to the last ones, I promise. You will get your pang for your buck. Now, if you want to know how to do those fancy bleed flare landings in much better detail than I ever did in my previous tutorials, then stick around. Anyway, I'm feeling good. I've finished exams, but my brain has been frazzled, fried, and boiled alive just from the sheer amount of cramming revision I've been doing. Like, I have case law and acts of parliament coming out of my ears. But anyway, enough of the boring stuff. You're here to learn about flying. Before we begin, I was genuinely blown away by the words of support and positivity on my mental health video. I was really hesitant to click upload on that one actually, but it's honestly so nice to see that there is a green side on the internet if you look in the right places and have a cracking community like we do here. Anyhow, thanks again guys. Let's get right into this Landings 101 episode for how to bleed flare and land in confined LZs. In my last few heli tutorials for Armour 3, I covered things like key bindings, the types of landings, and a basic look at how to do them, as well as emergency landings, but I never really went into deep detail about one of the most badass, but also difficult to master landings in Armour 3's helicopter flight model, the bleed flare. To begin, we have to think about what a bleed flare actually is. Back when I didn't have a gaming PC, I used to watch Dyslexy's videos all the time, and I remember one flying montage he made really sticking with me. He was doing all of these crazy landings, and during one of them, his passenger says, <laughs> And that sums it up really. Magic. It looks like magic, and when you get it right, that's what it feels like too. But the holy grail of the bleed flare landing, and the reason why it's so tricky, is in itself being able to lower your speed without gaining altitude. This is also called a zero-zero landing, because your altitude and speed reaches zero at almost exactly the same time. So let's cut to the chase. How do I do it? First off, I want you to grab the biggest and most clunky helicopter you hate flying. I don't know, maybe you like flying the Mohawk? Maybe you're a Mesoschist too. <laughs> but seriously, I actually used to fly these kinds of helos a lot in Armour 2 Takistan domination. I liked the challenge of flying them, but why are they useful for our purposes? In short, you need to learn to practice in a helicopter, which is the most difficult to achieve the balance state in. You won't learn diddly squat in something as easy as the little bird. Yes, you'll get a few more crashes and a few more keyboard snapping moments, but we're in the editor and there are no stakes, except for Barry, our test pilot, who's <laughs> anxiously quivering about the next test mission you're about to take him out on. We're in our clunky, dumpy helo, and we're ready to rumble. I want you to begin by flying at top speeds around the terrain. Get used to the controls and how clunky it is. You're probably used to the little bird. Get unused to it. Now let's begin somewhere nice and flat, like the airfield or the salt flats on Altus. Patchwork did a tutorial on the salt flats a while back about bleed flares, and this is a really great place to learn how to do them well. The beauty of this space is that we can keep practicing again and again with virtually no obstacles to crash into, which is all the better for Barry. So we're on approach right now, we're landing anywhere on these salt flats. Ordinarily, an approach means the moment between I'm flying around at the top of speed, nap of the earth, dodging in between trees, and it's time to chill out and get my landing hat on. One top tip for approaches when you're a bit more advanced in the editor is to pick clearings of trees, buildings, and piers on the water side to land at, and to pick them at complete random. Thinking on your feet without planning landings helps you to develop your ability to adapt to different LZs. But more importantly, you want somewhere which is going to limit your ability to overshoot the landing. So a nice tree clearing, for example, limits where you can and can't go. If you can't get it down in that area without smashing into the trees, you're not in control of your helo and you need to try again. Whenever you think of balancing your speed, 
Think of a set of scales. One thing goes up and another thing goes down. I want you to try and lower your speed by just using your cyclic. Don't press your throttle key. See what happens? You'll shoot for the skies. And eventually, many millenniums later, you will begin to lose speed, but at the expense of a huge gain in altitude. Try again, but this time, hold down your throttle key as soon as you pull back on the cyclic. It's still bad, but it's not as bad. So where are you going wrong? You haven't reached the balanced state of speed and altitude loss. Now I want you to pull back on the cyclic with the throttle decrease key held down. But this time, pull back much, much more slowly. You'll begin to feel when the helicopter wants to drop lower and lower. And the slower you get, the more it will want to drop and vice versa. You're only in this state once you've balanced out your speed and so any use of that throttle key will have a huge effect on your altitude. Only then will you be ready to do a fancy bleed flare. It's kind of like clutch slipping in a car. You need to find that bite point where the clutch wants to bite with the engine. It's a similar feeling in helicopters in Armour 3. You'll notice when you find the bite point, the helicopter will be tamed and you'll go from no control in your loss of altitude while losing speed to a noticeable bump where everything starts dropping off rapidly. In something like the Hummingbird, this is relatively swift to accomplish, but it still requires a great deal of patience. As a general tip, the Hummingbird achieves this state at around 70 km an hour and most larger helos can drop at about 150 km an hour. So, you've appeased Barry, and you're using the balancing scales of speed and altitude like a pro. The next bit is finessing that loss of speed and altitude into a quick descent into your desired landing zone. The first way to go for many is just a simple backward flare. These are often used by beginner pilots because the amount of control input required is minimal. However, they are much slower and expose you to the risk of both enemy fire and worse, overshooting the LZ. For a better control of where you're going to touch down, do something I call the scissor technique. And no, this is not a guide about lesbian sex mechanics. <laughs> what I mean by scissoring is using your cyclic left and right like a set of scissors to cut away your remaining speed. There's a point with landings where you are getting slower and slower and you need that altitude loss to come much quicker. Obviously, when you're slow, you're vulnerable. The beauty of this technique is that with minimal pedal input and some aggressive mouse flaring as you're seeing now, you can recover a lack of a proper balance state. Let's say you've spotted a group of stranded soldiers who pop smoke at an evac LZ over the crest of the mountains. There's a party of Tigrises waiting for you. You don't have much time to get into the balance state, so you compensate for this by bleeding off more speed with the scissoring technique. And that's it. That is the bleed flare in a nutshell. I wanted to make more of these quick snippet tutorials in the future so I can upload a bit more frequently. Let me know if you have any specific requests for Armour 3 landing guides or other video topics you might like to see. I have one video coming up which is about what made Armour 2 so good and also a Star Citizen 2020 review which may or may not be of some interest to people watching but anyway guys Thank you very much for watching. As always, have a great rest of the week. Tommy out.